been really all over that. Oh, yeah, um, I think so, too. You know, yeah, just anything to especially clear someone who she knew was innocent, which was kind of her thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Now, Grace's fall from grace appeared to begin when she claimed that seven girls had died at Camp Upton and that she had proof of two of those deaths. An Army investigation uncovered rumors of two deaths but never found any evidence to support her claims. She said she would only release her evidence if she was allowed to investigate. Since she was never asked to investigate, she never gave out any evidence. Do you find that she had any such evidence in your research, or did she just was she just making things up? That is the best book report summary of that chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a plus. I wish I would have that chapter is so confusing to me still. That story is so confusing that this really actually helped. So great job whoever uh, came up with that question. I think this is her last case, and I think this is what really seals the fact that we don't know who she is today. And I left it very open because, to your last question, did I find any research? I didn't find any research. So I couldn't answer it. For sure. So I kind of left it to the reader to, I gave them all the evidence and said, you know, what do you think? And I think you can make a case for either side that one, maybe she did push too far and she, she was known to really push the envelope to get a case. I'm mean, not make things up, but maybe push things a little farther than she should have and was called on. Uh, maybe she did that or maybe she did find something and the army finally pushed back and they really pushed back on her and the press on this and, and another possibility is that this could have been a trap too i, um, I was thinking that yeah that's what i thought yeah they were trying to get her yeah because upton was built largely by ex-police and this incident where she claims that two women died happening while it was being built so they could have started it and once she came forth the army just turned on her or the army could have even told her about it and then just turned on her to ruin her reputation. It was ruined after this. So I don't be clear. I have no idea which one of these three it is. Exactly. Um, or there could be a fourth, but it's disturbing. You know, it, it's hard for me to think that she was planning evidence and making stuff up because she didn't do that in any other case. I well, agree. So I don't know. That don't was know. the most frustrating part of the book for me to not know the answer to that particular investigation. No, me too. It's still very frustrating. And I looked really hard for records that the army still had or that the army attorneys still had and just couldn't find anything. So maybe someday somebody will. How long did you work on this? Um, a long time. I mean, some things took a few years. Some things took were easier to find. Some things were much harder. Um, but this one was the one where I, I, mean, I found a lot of information because I found all the, the testimony of the people that, you know, tried to get into the hotel and they were caught and then somebody recognized somebody else. And I found all that, but there was still no, it would have been great to have here again, her records yes. or her oh, yeah. notes from it, but they were gone. And she doesn't seem like someone who would get rid of that stuff. So I don't know. It, but it is very frustrating because I don't think she would invent stuff like that. She was famous enough, but I don't know. Do you think the Army confiscated her records? Who knows? It wouldn't. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. But again, you know, she could have. There's some people that have said, you know, she became, she really liked this fame from the Kruger case. She wanted a bigger case, and this is as big a case as it is, you know, going yeah. up against the army. When, when she didn't find the evidence she needs, she tried to help manufacture it a little by sending those people to check into the hotel, which is, you know, really scandalous mm -hmm. by those times. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to, like, just kind of talk around it because I wish I knew. It's that's, the, that's her last case, and I think it's something we all have to think about because it raises all these questions about who's right, who's wrong. And why was she completely shut down from this? Even when, like you said, she offers to investigate and testify, and the Army says no. Yeah. Well, she also wanted them to pay for her investigation. <laughs> yes. I think yes. That yeah. was probably that her was worst mistake. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I'm curious, what made you want to write this book? This her. I mean, I was researching something else, and I came upon her by total accident. And I was researching something else, and I was reading an article in, a, in an old newspaper, and it wasn't that good. And I just clicked the next page button, just for the heck of it. And all of a sudden, there's this big article that says, Mrs. Sherlock Holmes does it again. And I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I said, well, I didn't know there was a Mrs. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and it sounded really interesting, so I read it. Interview with her, it was about her career, it was right, all the things she did, it was right after the Kruger case she solved. And I thought it was a short story. It was so, just there was so much unbelievable stuff about her life. I didn't think it was real. And then I realized this was a real person. And then I said, well, why don't I know about her? I mean, she was the first woman U.S. District Attorney. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, that's colossal. So I, I looked around. I found a couple little articles here and there, um, but nothing big. And I just started looking and looking. And all of a sudden, this just became it. This was the story. And I had wanted to write something about missing girls and crime and, and police. And all of a sudden, I had the person to talk about all those subjects with. And it's one of those things that just shows up and you kind of have to go along. You don't have a choice. Yeah, that it was a gripping book. Yes. It was, well, oh, I'm, I'm so, so glad you wrote it, too, because I knew nothing about her before I read this book. And I am fascinated by her. And I think most of uh, your readers probably are, too, because you did such an excellent job of showing us just a, a portion of her life. Thank you. That means a lot. I mean, I wanted to tell it, try to get it all in there, but kind of make it a little exciting like a, a crime story should be but i also didn't want to she wasn't perfect mm. and i didn't want to make her perfect i wanted to get that all in there too so i really appreciate that please tell me some museum somewhere has her hat <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be great yeah i wish um, i hope I it's wish. in the I smithsonian mean, you know, somewhere <laughs> i searched all Everything. I looked for little libraries, you know, around where her families lived and the big libraries. And I searched everywhere for her kind of stuff, like thinking she had donated it or she kept it to someone. I mean, she had no children. But the only thing I ever found was a little telegram she wrote to Amelia Earhart. Oh, wow. And it was at a, uh, in a library at Purdue. And I was so excited. I said, oh, oh I my would, gosh, yeah. this, this will be so great. And then I got the letter and it said, Dear Amelia, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was a woman of few words. <laughs> great. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Brad, Brad, do you have any upcoming books or events you'd like our listeners to know about? I'm working on uh, the next book, which is called Olive the Lionheart. And it's about a woman who, around the same time period, who's uh, Scottish, and her fiancé goes missing in Africa. <clears throat> Excuse me again. She's never left home. She's never gone anywhere. And she says, I'm going to go find him. And it's the story of her adventure as she goes to Africa in an attempt to find out what happened to him. So it's kind of like an adventure Tarzan type story, but it's all true. Oh, um, wow. wow. When so I'm writing Colonial Africa. I'm writing that now, and, and some days it looks really cool, and some days it, it's really hard. <laughs> but, uh, well, we'll see. Wish me luck. It sounds fascinating. When do you think that'll be done? Soon, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I tell you what, when you get it done, you have an open invitation to return, and we can discuss it. All right, that's perfect, because these were by far the best questions I've ever seen, because they're true, like, reader questions of people that read it and get into it and have questions, not just, you know, who is Grace Humiston? Yeah. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Well, well, we definitely read it and devoured it. We loved it. Yes, we all loved it. That makes my day. <laughs> that was great. That's wonderful. Well, we would like to also say congratulations on the upcoming birth of your child. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. It's coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any other children? I have two others, which is why I'm coughing, because I caught what they have. Oh, oh yeah. Boy. 
about 12 times in the last three months. <laughs> they <laughs> love to share. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How old are they? They are four and two. Oh, oh my little goodness. ones. Oh, my goodness. So you're going to have a, you're you're gonna gonna have have a house full. <laughs> <laughs> How's your yeah, wife? Yeah, write this book fast. Okay? <laughs> How's your wife doing? Uh, good. She's ready for it to happen. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess that last so. month is the longest. <laughs> Especially yeah. with two little ones running around. Oh, yeah. Well, Brad, we thank you so much for being on the podcast. And we will update our show notes with your contact information if people would like to go on your website and find out more about you. Great. And thank you for taking time out of your day and your holiday preparations and your baby preparations to sit and talk with us. Oh, it was my pleasure. It's uh, already going to uh, be the best part of my day, so thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, and you have a happy holiday, and enjoy and the hope, rest of the and day. And hope to talk to you soon. Yes, same to you. Happy holidays. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. If you'd like to check out Brad Ricca or his books... He has a website, and it's brad-ricca.com, B-R-A-D-R-I-C-C-A.com. Yes. His books can be located on Amazon, at the library, just about anywhere books are sold. So definitely check him out. You will not be disappointed. Yes, it's excellent book. It's 2019, and the first thing we have to do is do some birthdays. Yay! Number one is my co-host, Tracy Dark. Her birthday is coming up. Yay, she's getting old. I don't have birthdays. Yes, you do. Happy (laughs) birthday, baby. Then we have birthdays. The biggest mystery birthdays there is. Mr. Sherlock Holmes himself is January 6th. Happy birthday, Sherlock. And another author who is sadly no longer with us, Joan Hess. We loved her Maggoty series. She was such a good author, and we miss her. But happy birthday, Joan. Her birthday is the same day as Sherlock's. January. And the next birthday boy we have is Umberto Eco. He wrote the famous In the Name of the Rose. And, yes. Oh, oh, one of my favorites. It is a nail-biting mystery. It's great. His birthday is January, January 5th. Yes. So we have a big happy birthday to some of our favorites. Yes. I think that wraps up our first 2019 it was, it was a dark and stormy book club. And a great way to start out this year is if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe so you continue to get our episodes. Yes. We are going to strive to really dig deep and find some new authors for you this year. Yes, and we have some exciting things coming up. We will let you know, be sure. And subscribe to our newsletter so you can know what's coming up in the next month. The way you can do all this is by going to it was a dark and stormy book club dot com dot com. That's our website. And it gives you links to everything you need to do. Episodes, Uh, reviews, subscriptions to the newsletter. Yes. If you need it, it's going to be on there. Ends our episode, and we're looking forward to our next author. Our next author in our A to Z series is Andrew Schaefer. So that'll be in two weeks. And he writes the book, Hope Never Dies. The Obama-Biden mystery. Series. Yes. I think you'll enjoy them. They're a little quirky and funny, but they're a very good read, and we look forward to talking to him. Absolutely. That brings us to the end. We hope you enjoy it us next time. Don't forget next week to listen to one of our bookends episodes. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery, and Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Bye. Bye.